86 billion neurons, and it solves the problem, bathes the brain in norepinephrine pulses while we sleep, waves of blood vessel constriction that enhance lymphatic flow, and if something blocks that process, you get brain constipated, like watching a Marvel movie. But how the f Why is sleep so important? It's a deceptively simple question with surprisingly complex answers. But one leading theory is that sleep is the brain's deep cleaning cycle, clearing out metabolic wastes that accumulate throughout the day. And brand new research just revealed how this process works, along with an alarming connection to a popular sleep medication that might, well, constipate the system. Yes, I said that, and we're going to break it all down. But before we get started, I have one quick little favor to ask you. If you like these breakdowns of the latest metabolic health science, please hit subscribe to support me. I can't tell you how much this helps, and snowballs to help me get you voices from the primary research teams, which will also be included at the end of this video, and kick up initiatives like continuing medical education credits programs we have going for doctors, physicians, as well as going multilingual, including Spanish. Acaban de publicar un nuevo artículo sobre cetonas, la enfermedad de Alzheimer y la salud. In Hindi. Mene ek mahine tak har ghante ek anda khaya. Pehli baat ye hai, mes which we're going to be rolling out in 2025 on this channel so more people can have access to metabolic health science. I really hope you can help me out by clicking subscribe. Anyway, with that, let's get on with it. First, I need to arm you with some brain biology background, starting with defining something called the glymphatic system, which is the cleaning system for your brain that activates during sleep. Here's what you need to know. Throughout the rest of the body, there's a series of vessels called lymphatic vessels, or the lymphatic system. However, your brain, despite being among the most metabolically active organs, actually lacks a lymphatic system to get the waste out of the brain. Interesting, right? And this is because your brain is so packed full of 86 billion neurons, not to mention the billions of support cells, called glia, and a complex network of blood vessels, that there physically isn't any space for another vessel system. This is where the glymphatic system, with the G, comes in, named for glia, the brain support cells, and lymphatic. And it solves the problem. Unlike the lymphatic system without the G, which is a series of tubular vessels throughout the body, the glymphatic system is a set of channels that expands as blood vessels constrict. Think about it this way. Imagine you have a blood vessel running through brain tissue, all bathed in cerebrospinal fluid. When the vessel constricts and it shrinks in diameter, it creates a space between the vessel and brain tissue, allowing more cerebrospinal fluid to flow through and wash away waste. This is the glymphatic waste removal system in the brain. And because the brain is less metabolically active during sleep, and especially deep sleep, it allows the prime opportunity, deep sleep, to constrict blood vessels, in turn, on or upregulate the glymphatic system, clearing out metabolic waste from your brain. So simply, deep, non-rapid eye movement and REM sleep is peak time for cleaning up the brain. But how the fenestrated capillaries does this work? That was the key question answered by this exciting new research. Now hang in with me for a moment because there's going to be some jargon coming up, but we're going to boil it all down after that. Through an elegant series of experiments conducted in mice, the researchers were able to show that the neurotransmitter norepinephrine is responsible for glymphatic flow. Specifically, a group of neurons in the brain, in the brain stem, called the locus coruleus. It bathes the brain in norepinephrine pulses while we sleep, particularly during NREM sleep, this deep phase of sleep. Norepinephrine is a vasoconstrictor, and these pulses therefore generate waves of blood vessel constriction that enhance lymphatic flow and metabolic waste removal from the brain. By way of analogy, 
Think about your gastrointestinal system. Your intestines, they use rhythmic contractions to move out waste, move it along your intestines and out the other end. And if that process gets impaired or stops, you get constipated. Now imagine if your brain had a similar waste removal system, the glymphatic system, but instead of food, it's clearing out toxic metabolic byproducts. And if something blocks that process, you get brain constipated. And that's exactly or likely what happens when norepinephrine pulses in the glymphatic system aren't working properly. So the researchers then ask the provocative question, what do certain sleep medications, specifically in this study they use zolpidem, which acts on the GABA system, do to norepinephrine pulses in glymphatic function? In brief, they find, shockingly, that the sleep medication, zolpidem, impairs the normal oscillations in norepinephrine and decreases glymphatic flow. The implication is that long-term use could contribute to a buildup of metabolic debris in the brain and possibly long-term negative consequences like cognitive decline. Indeed, long-term human studies have linked zolpidem to higher rates of dementia and Alzheimer's disease. But fortunately, this does not appear to be the case for other sleep medications that are often used to help with sleep. I guess that's what a sleep medication is. Like the atypical antidepressant trazodone. In fact, there are suggestions in the scientific literature that this medication might improve sleep architecture and is associated also with lower rates of dementia and Alzheimer's disease. And as a critical caveat and aside, I'm not a sleep scientist by trade, but I have reached out to a few, and if I acquire any new specific insights, I'll add those to the newsletter linked in the video notes. So make sure to check out that newsletter for more updates. So of course, an exciting frontier of research moving forward will be developing protocols to enhance this glymphatic flow system. For example, I'm currently enjoying playing with an acoustic neuromodulation device called Elamide, which has EEG sensors in the head device and sends acoustic pulses to interfere with alpha waves and accelerate the onset of sleep, help you fall asleep faster. Currently, it's only approved to help you get to sleep faster but this sort of non-invasive technology may soon be able to alter the microarchitecture during deep sleep, potentially helping to improve glymphatic efficiency and removal of waste from the brain. Pretty cool, right? And we could also ask how different exposures to different types of light at different times during the day might impact sleep microarchitecture in glymphatic flow. And with advancements in technology, maybe we will soon be able to turn on glymphatics or turn up glymphatics and brain cleaning when we're awake but doing mindless tasks like watching a Marvel movie or a Harry Potter movie or Game of Thrones. Honestly, those are my nerd dreams. Activating brain clearing while I get to watch Game of Thrones, oh, the best. Anyway, what's the takeaway? Really, sleep, it's not just about feeling rested. It's one of your body's most powerful tools for long-term health and brain health, but whole body health too. Keeping your glymphatic system running smoothly could mean sharper cognition, lower risk of neurodegenerative disease, and better overall performance, brain and whole body. And with emerging technologies from acoustic neuromodulation to light exposure strategies, we may one day soon be able to fine tune this process. But the fundamentals of sleep, they still matter. So sleep at a consistent time, minimize blue light at night, avoid eating too close to bedtime, and keep your sleep environment cool and dark. And seriously, if you're sleeping at 70 degrees Fahrenheit or higher, we need to talk. But bottom line, sleep isn't just important. It's one of the best brain biohacks you have. So protect it, optimize it, and most importantly, get some. And now, words from the primary research team. Stay curious, and thank you so much for watching. Our results are exciting because we uncover the mechanism behind clearance of waste from the brain during sleep. This knowledge puts us one step closer to answering the ultimate question, 
of why we even need to sleep at all. Knowing that the brain relies on this pumping mechanism to flush CSF through the system can hopefully help us develop new diagnostic tools and identify new drug targets to ultimately increase the efficiency of the lymphatic system. Although we're still not at the point where we have a pill we can take which will just boost our lymphatic system, we have data showing that we can do things to the brain to help this CSF flow a little bit. For example, studies in mice have shown that visual stimulation can entrain the synchronized activity of the neurons, which will promote CSF flow in the brain. Other studies made in humans have shown that deep breaths can also stimulate CSF flow through the ventricle and towards the brain. The next step in this project will be to dive even further down into the relationship between sleep and the lymphatic system. For example, we don't really know the role of REM sleep in the whole mechanism yet. In addition, we can use the knowledge we have now to look into other types of sleep medication and also different diseases to see how they interact with the slow oscillations that drive lymphatic clearance.